welcome to The Know. I'm Ashley. I'm Bernie. And uh, we have a special guest with us today, Richard yes. Fogey, the design director for Undead Labs. So Came exciting. all the way down to Austin to show us State of Decay 2. Very excited about this. It's coming out in a couple of weeks for Xbox One and PC. Yeah. And we've known about this game for a couple of years, but now it's almost here. It's been a little bit quiet here and there, and so this is gonna be probably the best look we've had at the game to date. Ashley invited me to this one because she knew <laughs> that if she played this game and I wasn't in the room when she was playing it, that would I would be the end never, of everything. I've never, ever forgiven her for that, ever. No, watching some Game of Thrones is one thing, watching Stranger Things is one thing, playing State of Decay 2, that's like across the line. That's across the line I know not to cross. Well, if you've been a long time, how long's it been, Fogey, since the last game came out? Oh my gosh, it's uh, almost four. And a, so it's four and a half years. So about halfway it's through our podcast run, because our podcast is about nine years old at this point. So about halfway through, if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, you know I have talked about this game relentlessly, uh, especially when I was playing it. In so. fact, if you go back to the early podcasts, we were talking about how much we wanted a game like this. Uh, we would talk about, you know, uh, Red versus Blue is one of our popular series. Mm -hmm. We came up with this concept of something called the zombie plan. What's your zombie plan? And how all of our... You had shirts. All of our dorky friends had plans for not what they were going to do later in life, but what exactly <laughs> they would do minute by minute if a zombie apocalypse ever broke out. Everyone has a zombie plan. Oh, Everybody does. It's just a thing. They just have it in the back of their brain somewhere. That, that's the basis for this game. I it's, mean, yeah. a bunch of people sitting around saying... Well, okay, it happens right now. What are we gonna do? And and then talking through the various scenarios and fantasies that everybody has for how they would survive, and then that's that was the impetus for this. Nobody ever has the I'm gonna die in the first five minutes. So that, that would no. be me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I think you're <laughs> most <I'm> people. Like, <laughs> uh, at this point, I think Ellie is gonna outsurvive all of us. Uh, if anyone's been watching uh, Skill Tree. Uh, it's Ellie's show where she's learning all kinds of survival stuff that would be really good to know in this kind of Yeah, scenario. that was a huge mistake. I should have done that for myself and not for her. <laughs> but one of the things I loved about the first uh, State of Decay was it, it scratched that itch of like going around, scavenging, building up a home base, and then some of the big moments were moving to a new home base as right, well. Right. And that was a huge decision of like moving all those survivors that you had found, resources and everything, and just establishing yep. in a new place. But well, uh, one of the things I loved about it too was in the first one uh, was talking about people the game with other people who were playing it. And it was a really new thing at the time where the game they played was very different from the game I played. Like there was a friend of mine, I was talking about Marcus, and he's like, who's Marcus? Right. I said, he's the main guy. He's the guy that you play the whole time. He goes, oh no, I think that guy died in the first two minutes yep. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas he was my reload character. If I died, I'm like, no, that was a mistake. <laughs> I gotta reload. Right. It's a huge part of State of Decay that everybody's story ends up being different. Oh, so we, we should back up and explain that for people who aren't familiar, who didn't play the first State of Decay, because that's, that's not something that happens in a lot of games. That you don't just play a character, you play a community. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that's exactly right. So, the um, in the zombie apocalypse, nobody's safe. So if except if, for me, except for you. Uh, so if your if your survivor can die, and you're not playing a, sort of a traditional narrative game where we just go, okay, that didn't really happen. Let's scoot back five minutes, and and now you're not dead again. Um, but instead, they're dead and they stay dead. Uh, the narrative has to adapt. It has to react to the choices that you make and the consequences of those choices. And if somebody dies, then it, it becomes a story about somebody else. Yeah. A different community. Yeah, it's a real sense of loss. And then you basically pick up with another survivor in the community and they become your guy. Yeah, exactly. So this is this is this community. I'm getting uh -oh. eaten on the other side. What's going on over here with this guy? I'm a little worried about him. I'll, I'll well, jump right in now, and check we'll, him. Right now, let's worry about the guy who's in the middle of a bunch of zombies. Um, but the Marcus was uh, one of the main survivors for sure. Everybody had. I know a lot of people that have a story about their Marcus and what happened to their Marcus. And yeah, their Marcus got torn apart. Uh, right. So we're talking about Nito, and he's the person you're playing right now. Uh, no, is this is right? actually somebody else back in my community. I'm currently. Oh no, no, you're right. I'm Nito. Uh, he's injured, uh, so I'm dealing with uh, some abrasions, flesh wounds. He probably had a, a run in with uh, a couple of zombies b before this, or even a feral. Um, and you'll see when I jump back out, my health my health meter has a little chunk taken out of it um, from these injuries that I, I have to get. Coming. Oh boy, that I have to get back to my base and either um, uh, go to my infirmary, use that infirmary to recover from these injuries, or switch out to another survivor entirely to give Nito you know, a chance to to heal up. And this is a world, if you didn't play the first State of Decay, this is a world with, we're fighting very, what I call Romero-esque style zombies, which are the slow, steady zombies. One of the things that I appreciate uh, about State of Decay is that it really leans into what I consider to be 
the really compelling thing about the zombie genre, which is it's ultimately it's up to you if you like you could search things or you could search things quickly. If you search things quickly, it made more noise. So if you took your time and you were methodical, you stood a lot better chance than if you just ran around trying to shoot things and trying to break open doors. Busting open doors the way I yeah. just did, yep. fast searching like this, which is sometimes it's fine and sometimes it's It'll crash and you'll make a bunch of noise. Actually, I should take that. And then you'll hear, you'll hear that crash and you'll think, uh-oh, what did that do to me? Because you don't really know if anything hurt it or not. So you'll go outside and stand in the street for a little while. But uh, then it also has, in addition to those, you know, classic Romero-style zombies, it has the uh, special types of zombies as oh, well. Oh, yep, look, some zombies hurt you. We got the special zombies. We do have some, we do have some Snyder zombies too, some fast ones. Well, because there's a couple like a different types of zombies. Yes, absolutely. Um, and and people are religious about this. We heard it endlessly after the first game. We you know we had our reasons and uh, for for fast versus slow. And I like the 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 freshness idea. Like the slower ones tend to be the ones that aren't so fresh anymore. And you get right. some fresh zombies, and they got they still got a little muscle tone left, so they're all faster. Um, they're not. Rigor mortis hasn't completely set right. Them yeah, yet. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of the ligaments are still attached. Um, but in addition to that, we do have some freaks, which we'll very likely encounter while we're out here running around the world. Um, what are freaks? There are special zombies, uh, and we have some some fiction that, that suggests that they have kind of evolved from these other zombies, and what's mm -hmm. going on with our, our, our zombie plague, and the progression of it is a big part of what's going on in State of Decay 2. We have these play carts, which you can probably see some on the map. No, I can't see any on the map. I noticed on the load screen there was some art around hearts as well. Is yeah. that where that comes from? Okay. Yeah, so so these play carts are, are kind of the next step in what's going on with the zombie plague here in, uh, in State of Decay 2, and a big part of what you're going to be doing uh, over the course of your survivor story uh, for your communities is finding these play carts and taking them out. So okay. we'll try to do that while we're doing the demo. So is that kind of an extension of in the first game when you'd be out and about and the zombie hordes would approach a base or would you know you could set up mines on some roads and things like that? Right and we would have infestations as well so mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of oh, what, yeah. it's kind of an extension of that <laughs> how, how things are continuing to move forward. I'm just running around with this guy and I should actually have taken him back to the base when he's I was there. He's looking like he's in pretty bad shape. You know what he, I actually have a first aid kit he's fine. He's fine. Just rub some medicine on just, it. Yeah, just rub some <laughs> dirt on it. Get out there and, and, and keep going. Check this police car. Uh, so what I really need to do, because we don't have a ton of information about what's going on in the map, mm -hmm. is hit up any one of these points. And similar to the first game where we could um, scout out additional information by um, getting up to a high vantage point. Right. And, um, and uh, using the survey tools to figure out what's going on around you. That'll mm -hmm. give me more of a sense of what's going on uh, in the area, and it'll scout out uh, the play carts and infestations that I was talking about earlier. How what? big is this world? Uh, each, we have three of these maps. Oh, wow. And this map is approximately the same size as the map in the first game. So if you played the first game, uh, you kind of get a sense of uh, the small town and the areas around it. Um, these are, basically, each one of these maps is that same size. When you guys were moving from the first game to the second game, was there anything in particular that you wanted to focus on? Um, multiplayer okay. uh, was, yeah. was the biggest one. And um, we'll take a look at some of the co-op in just a little bit. Um, people really wanted um, to play this game with their friends. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And so that was our, our primary focus was making sure that we had that and it was all squared away. The other thing was uh, making sure that the dynamic narrative systems that we started to, to work on the first game was something that we pushed forward quite a bit as well. Um, people... Uh, really like the idea of a story that's unique to them. As we were talking about earlier, no no two group of survivors ends mm -hmm. up looking the same. Nope. Just just the nature of the game because people can uh, people can pass and uh, we can't make this a story about a specific individual. It's a story about a group of uh, survivors. And so uh, having the story of each com person's community like come through and really be based on the, the choices and consequences um, of, of their story. So there's a couple hordes hanging out right. there. Right. Yeah. So is that infestation right there? Is that what that is? Uh, that's that's a couple hordes. Um, there uh -huh. there's gonna bound to be an infestation around here somewhere. I'm just trying to scout out all of these spots. I know it's not super exciting. Dude, footage. this is I love stuff like this <laughs> personally. Um, I love being able to check off boxes and like you know scope things out and plan meticulously what I'm gonna do. So I actually love this part of the game. This is this is really where when you get into the survival fantasy and you're 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 doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. You're scouting things out. You know where you're gonna go. This is gonna reveal a bunch of information on the map that I'll show you in just a second. 
um, that makes it a lot more useful when you're trying to figure out how you want to solve problems for your community. And you still have that where the radio calls in, you're talking to base about things you find. And yep. Yeah, that's so great. So, um, so all of this, you can see now we have a bunch more information here on the map of the surrounding area, and it gives me an idea of like, okay, there's potentially going to be food here, and if I set up an outpost, I'm going to get regular food collection from this place, and it's going to give uh, mm -hmm. get a, a little permanent safe area around it. Um, right now on my base screen, you can see we have a couple of outposts, we have room for one more, um, and we have a couple of uh, empty pretty large facility slots that are worth um, exploring building on here. Um, we try to give way more information about what's going on with your community, yeah. uh, what the inputs and outputs for your various survival resources are. So specifically, we got six people in the community uh, eating food every day, but we've also got that outpost that's bringing in one food every day. Um, and uh, so we know, I know what's going on in a, uh, in a way that allows me to solve problems much more readily. Mm -hmm. I can see there that I'm short on beds. That's gonna be a problem because I'm not, my survivors aren't gonna be recovering um, as, as quickly um, from fatigue and they're gonna be getting fatigued more quickly um, when they're out in the field. We wanted to make, we had a lot of this detail in the first game, mm -hmm. but it wasn't exposed to players. Players had no idea that a lot of this stuff was going on under the hood. So people would try to intuit what was going on on, um, and and the reality is we just need to tell them a little bit more about what was going on under the hood with yeah. the simulation. So yeah. it looks like you have a lot of issues to correct with this <laughs> particular base. Like yes. uh, you're bringing in one food per day, but you are eating six food per day. Right. So uh, you're you're on the downswing there. Hope you've yep. got some stores. Your infirmary is in trouble. Every, you don't have enough beds. Right. Not enough beds. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that you can shore these things up. Um, we got this uh, kitchen that we can fix. That's uh, going to help a little pardon bit. Pardon me, you have a chic eatery kitchen. Uh, it's because of the location. Some of the <laughs> some of the bases that you can that you can set up have these uh, built-in facilities that are unique to those bases, and this one is very chic. Um, Which um, affects their morale when yeah. they're eating there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so you're using. Uh, I'm going to use materials to to get that fixed up. It's going to take 15 minutes. So we'll come back to that a little bit later. In I remember that so well in the, in the first game was just the time right. of like, oh, I got to commit an hour to this or something like that. Right. You and, know? and and in the first game we had offline progression. Mm -hmm. which is something that we removed from this game because a lot of people had issues with that. So we would schedule things out to like, okay, you want to build this facility? It's going to take two days. Yep. Real time, two days. Yep. And so people would be like, uh, okay, I guess I Just started that. Just play for a few days? Mm -hmm. they come back later. Uh, but they would come back later and all their food was gone and because rats had broken into their, their <laughs> kitchen or something like that, right? All right, so now it is done in real time, but only while you're in game. Only while you're playing. Um, and there are a lot of different uh, things that you can do in facilities that you weren't able to do before. We have a deeper uh, system for allowing you to build consumables um, that you know have some prerequisites. Do you have somebody in your community that has a knowledge of mechanics? Um, does this facility have, um, you have to upgrade it. Obviously, um, the upgrade system will expose like more cool things that you can do with these facilities. Um, and as you progress, uh, you can become fairly powerful and, and do some really great stuff. But mm -hmm. when you start off, it's it's scratching to survive. Your your community that's that's just kind of kicking off. You have to figure out where your food's coming from, where you're sleeping, um, where all of your you know how to get all of your resources to get this community up off the ground. And so your base is really the cornerstone of the game, right? Yeah. So this is where you go to recover. This is where survivors will live. This is where you will execute a lot of your activities from. Yeah, a, a lot of your day-to-day, -day, there's a bloater, no bloater out right there. there yeah. um, a lot of your, a lot of, everything kind of comes back to the base. Um, your survivors kind of come and go. <laughs> that's a, kind of a nice way of putting it. Uh, but your base is a thing that's always kind of consistently there for you to continue making forward progress with. But then you're not stuck with just one base throughout the entire game that you upgrade to max. You can move around if you find a better location that, say, you know you're going to be getting regular food deliveries or something. Exactly. So um, it's a big choice, like you mentioned earlier in the in the discussion. It's a big choice to decide that you want to go from one base to another base because you, you, you don't just go because it has a more chic eatery. I, I, I just I do <laughs> remember could. though sitting like um, at the curb in my car, looking over this place, like, almost like looking at a curb appeal for a, a real estate <laughs> deal, and saying, "Oh, look at the walls on that place. That's pretty good. That's way better than what I have now." Because one of the things about the base is, well, you call it a base. It's not like, you know, uh, it's not safe. There is a threat level, which I saw an indicator yeah. when you had up the base screen earlier, but the base itself could come under attack at any point in time. Right, so um, 
that's another thing that we're tracking in this one that we didn't track very well in the first one, even mm -hmm. though it was a system under the hood, is this uh, this idea of the threat level. The more noise you're making, and right now we're pairing that uh, chic eatery, um, <laughs> is making a little bit more noise. The number of people that are part of your base um, and other facilities that you have that just kind of make a little bit of noise. Um, is drawing zombies in. And the higher this goes, the more likely you are, you are to have a siege at your base, where zombies just start coming and you have to take care of it. So it's it's important to try to balance things out. The bigger the base, the more noise you're gonna be making. The more people you have, the more noise you're gonna be making. You're gonna have to deal with these sieges from time to time. Mm -hmm. But then you also want to bring in as many survivors as you can, right? You're not gonna leave anyone That'll out because they're noisy. It's it's an interesting choice that you have to make. Like, uh, you, you gotta don't, feed them. Yeah, you, you've, gotta, you've gotta feed them. Um, somebody was asking me about this the other day. They were like, what's the most survivors you can have? I was like, the most I was able to personally manage in one of my communities was about 10 because the the food requirements become so intense that the entirety of my base is now dedicated to generating food or, or finding food. I'm spending all my time getting food, which means we can't do anything else. And you can do you mind if I play? Really well, you know, have yeah, the, that way you're the not one back base at a time, right? It, you can move from one location to another, but you're not expand, you're not franchising your bases. You no. are moving. Yeah, you are moving. You're going from one spot to another spot. And so you, you end up leaving a lot of the, the facilities that you set up behind. You get some bonuses and you get some refunds on some of your materials to make kind of starting off your new your new spot a little bit easier. But it does take it does take a bit of doing and you are saying goodbye to that old that old base. So what are the benefits of moving bases? You uh, may find a place with better food or uh, more soundproof walls or thicker walls that can withstand a siege. What are the kinds of bases that you can find in the game? Uh, you'll find bases with better defensibility. Um, you'll find bases with built-in eateries. Um, you'll find bases with um, that have uh, more slots. So in this one, we added large slots, which wasn't a thing we had before. Large slots are necessary for some of the bigger, um, the bigger facilities you can get that are kind of large-scale projects. They're going to be things like farms or um, auto workshops and things like that, where you can. Uh, get some access to some fancier functionality. Um, so the number of slots that a given base will have will change. The number of people that it can support just natively, the number of beds that it has built in, um, all that changes. So when you start off, you're gonna tend to be in a small, you know, a smaller house with just some some decent walls around it that are gonna keep some zombies out, but you're gonna very quickly outgrow a space like that with the number of survivors that you wanna support in your community. And how much do the survivors contribute towards their own ongoing existence. Yeah. You can send them out to go find stuff, to scavenge, to scout. What can they do? So they naturally will do some of that stuff while you're away. You'll get messages from time to time that says, oh, so-and-so was out and about and they found a couple things. Um, they can come along with you when you're going out on scavenging runs. They'll defend the base while, while you're away. Um, generally, we leave the, the fun stuff up to you, though, so that you're the one that's going out and, and, uh, and, and getting the real resources and stuff like that. Okay, and then there's uh, an additional feature in this game that w in which you can get sick. Yes. And that's going to cause a whole new layer of problems. Right. So I was talking about the, the, the blood plague earlier, and we haven't run into anybody yet. Uh, the zombies that have um, blood plague, you'll know them when you see them. They're, they're red, covered in these uh, sort of, their, their skin's kind of bubbling. Gross. Uh, yeah, they oh. look super gross. And Tough. when they attack you, uh, in addition to doing damage, you start to build up this infection. And when that uh, infection meter fills all the way up, you then have blood plague and you have to be either cured or exiled or there's a third option that involves you not surviving much longer. <laughs> oh, that's sad. So what are the stages to getting cured? Uh, so, uh, when you fight these plague zombies, they will occasionally drop um, some samples behind, which are also gross. Um, that sounds awful. Uh, and you need these samples to, and combined with uh, some meds and medical process in your facility that you have back at your base, will allow you to uh, create the cure that you need to survive. Um, there's another great way of, there's an infestation up north, uh, there's another great way of getting those samples and that's fighting these plague hearts. This oh. guy's fatigued, I'm gonna switch out. Yeah, you're close to your base. Right here? Yeah. This is it. Yeah, if you if you just go on that gate, you should be able to go into your community menu and, and switch to any one of those folks. And there's a ton of, I saw stats on the characters. You should drop off those materials real Yeah, quick, right huh? here, right? Uh, take a left. And here's the orange icon, you're headed towards ah, yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, yeah, I, found, you I, found, I found a bag of supplies. So one of the things in the first game was that the characters themselves had traits. Yeah. Uh, and there was some progression there, but it feels like now when I go into the screen, I see the characters. Uh, it has morale with other characters. Uh, does that mean, how do I go into there? 
Yeah, you drew yeah. that. So he's yeah. re he's ready to do some specialization. Um, wits, fighting, and craftsmanship have all been maxed out. Um, so why don't you drop down to some of those guys real quick? We can show you the specialization. We were talking about that. Um, so you can choose basically mm -hmm. a specialization from these core uh, core set of survival skills. Um, there are four different um, specializations that you can get per uh, per skill, um, but you only usually get an option for two depending on the uh, the survivor that you have. And that's gonna unlock sort of different functionality, different abilities. Um, craftsmanship is one of the, um, it's sort of a utility. So this is where you're gonna get into some of the deeper things that no other, uh, you're pr the odds of you encountering somebody else that has craftsmanship are decent, but maxing that out is difficult. And then specializing mm -hmm. in construction or metal work, it's going to change the kinds of uh, things you can craft, the kind of facilities you have access to. And then, does it affect the time to build things if you have? It can. Okay. Uh, a lot of the traits can affect uh, various aspects of um, both, like, it affects the survivor and how they feel when they're out in the field. It also affects the base um, and how things go at your base, whether or not they have inter interesting interactions with other folks in morale, like you were pointing out. Um, somebody might, you know, snore at night, and that's going to cause some <laughs> problems at the base. Um, somebody might be... Um, uh, might start fights, and you'll see that happen. They'll start <laughs> fights, and then it'll, it, you'll see the effect of the morale on the rest of your community when that happens. And we wanted to give you all of that, wow, that information. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, he's probably specialized into sword play, which is uh, going to make him pretty good with that edge weapon. I'm going to head there. Yeah. So you say the most survivors you were able to manage uh, at any one time was about 10. That was for me. Some people might be better. <laughs> but even so, there's basically a cap on how many people you can realistically manage in a particular base, and you may come across someone later on who maybe has a better skill set. Are you able to kick out oh, yeah, survivors absolutely. from your current base? And if so, how do you do that? Do you sit down? Do you have a family meeting? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's a little like trust, that. Trust. The, like, uh, so the community screen that you were just in, that we were looking at before, um, one of the options that you'll get when you're hovering over somebody is the option to exile them. Um, but you don't just do it from the menu. When Once you've decided, yeah, once you've decided that it's time for somebody to go, you then have to go to them in person. <gasps> and you have to t let them know. Because we want to make sure a couple things. We want to make sure that you weren't accidentally doing this. We can do send them Makes a letter. Sense. And we wanted it and we wanted it to be personal. No, they I got, they, exactly. They, they deserve it in person. Yeah, it, right. It's a right. big life change. Yep. It, it makes sense to have that done in person. But also, oh look, is that a bloater right there? No, it's just, he's just chunky. Okay. <laughs> he's just, how dare you? <laughs> he's probably wearing Crocs too. Probably needed to be put out of his misery. <laughs> Uh -oh. so, so is this the fatigue infestation? is something you really got to be careful of. Yeah, this oh, is the infestation. Oh, no. You're almost through with it, but yeah, there's a screamer, and yeah, that's going to make screamer. things a little bit more dramatic. Yeah. Because and that's addition, an example of the different types of zombies you can freak. get. So you yeah. have like some of the fast zombies. This is a screamer, and will alert other zombies in the area. Exactly, and so that horde that was just going to be cruising by before is now coming to visit because they heard the screamer. No. You've no, almost got that come. infestation cleared, here, too. Here they come. The demo has a unlimited ammo, right? Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but you should have some pretty nice equipment in addition to uh, flashlights L3. Yeah, thanks. Oh, here we go. Oh, what was that? I saw it on the ground. It freaked me out. <laughs> My least favorite zombie type. Oh, it's a soldier. Yeah, so he's going to be a bit bulletproof. Not totally bulletproof, but he's going to be uh, hard to kill with a gun. How about bladed weapon proof? No, you'll be able to take him out eventually. But you pop this helmet off, he should be good to go. You can get him to okay. get if you needed to. <laughs> Almost done. Okay. But you also were making a bunch of noise while you were running around shooting your gun. It has a suppressor on it, but that's uh -huh. still got a little bit of noise coming well, off. Well, what's it. even the point of this? <laughs> when you. Uh, oh, see? that was oh, bad. There I'm go. just. I'm, See, so so much for being quiet. So that I tried to search a little bit faster, and that to it me made a crash. is where I always mess up. I just get impatient. Yeah, but do you really think if they didn't uh, hear go. the screamer and they didn't hear the firing of the gun, or they can hear a crash? That'll yeah, draw some shelf. more people in. You know, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> so when you've seen people playing this, what are the sort of different approaches? Bernie's obviously a shooter. Yeah. Well, he forgoes stealth. <laughs> you were to just shoot the place up. When you were playing a little bit earlier, you seemed much more on the quite stealthy side. You were trying to take the zombies down 
very quietly when you could? Reasonably quietly. Uh, I, I've done a lot of these demos recently and, and <laughs> I've been called out for, for being super noisy and loud and kind of bull in a china shop style. Um, it, it really does range between those two extremes. I've seen people who play just super cautiously. Mm -hmm. Stealth everywhere. Every time I search, it's the slow search and I'm like, come on, I just want to get my stuff and run out of here. Um, and uh, it's definitely more effective to be stealthy, but it does, it takes forever. It does. And that time that you take is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's time that you might need if you've got, if you, yeah, if so, you've got so a survivor back. There? If you've got a survivor back at your base who's who's on the clock because they've got blood plague and you're trying to get cure back to them and you need oh, to find nothing. some meds to get out into the world or to get them to get them all better and get them back on on their feet, you might need to go fast. Um, the the main trade off is is how much noise you're making, how much you're breaking, how much risk you're bringing on to the survivor that you're playing as and the other folks that are potentially nearby. Um, you're not the only humans in the world. Uh, there are other human enclaves that are that are part of this world. And another uh, addition that we have from the first game is that they're not all friendly. So, an ex like a, an exchange program where you say, hey, we have to kick this dude out, would you mind taking him on? Probably not going to go over that no, well. No, probably wouldn't go over that well. In fact, uh, folks, folks that get sent off in the world, um, they might not be too thrilled to have been dismissed from your community. That might come back to haunt you at some point later in the future. Oh, really? I can see him holding a grudge. Well, most of the human interactions in the first game were done through story quests. Is yeah. it similar in this? Uh, no. It's, well, there are still some some things that are, are sort of storytelling uh, uh, structures, but for the most part, it's a bit more organic. Um, and so you're going to encounter folks in the world, and it's up to you to decide how you want to how you want to interact with them. Do you want to uh, do you want to do what they're asking you to? do? Do you want to worry about being allies with these folks? Do you not care? Um, they offer a lot um, trade opportunities. Uh, there, there'll be kind of ongoing benefits from certain enclaves if you if you kind of see their 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 goals and desires through. Uh, they'll have an ongoing relationship with you where they say, hey, cool, we're going to send you some food every day or we're going to give you this ongoing benefit or you can call us up on your radio and we'll help you out. Um, and uh, if you hit Y, yeah, the it's not showing up for some reason. It might be bugged out. Well, um, this is a near final, but not, not final quite, build. Definitely not final, so we might have to... Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Yeah. It's just, uh, just for the show. <laughs> Dramatic pause. Dramatic pause. Uh, so yeah, you can craft some medical items, or if you do uh, that guy right there, it mm -hmm. will uh, get you fixed up completely at the cost of significant amount of meds. Really? Okay. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you're, if you're injured and messed up, that could be a pretty big deal. Otherwise... Um, uh. Finding stuff in the field can be pretty useful. You can actually, in this slot right here, that yeah. big slot, you found some seeds while you're out there. If you brought them back, mm -hmm. um, can you hit the interact button? Let's see if you can build that farm. Yeah, so if you go down to... Oh, uh, there? Yeah, you could start that farm building. Okay. Uh, which, again, you pointed out, we were pretty pretty low on food earlier, so one of the things that we need to get going is some food. And, yeah, there you go. So that, that will be a farm in about 15 minutes. So this is like the construction materials that they're using to build yep, the farm. They're, they're, they've set everything up and they're going to get started building uh, building this farm out. Fantastic. All right, where should I head to now? We should get into trouble. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so you did a good job clearing out that infestation. I would love to find some plague hearts. Um, the and best way to do yeah. that might be for us to switch to a different community and see what's going on in one of these other sure. maps. So we got that going here. And we're going to just switch so out. So when you switch these different maps, are you switching to... Uh, a completely different community, or is this a different stage of the game? Yeah, what I'm doing right now is flipping. We had these communities sort of pre-set up um, so that we could um, very easily give demos for the game. Um, and uh, I am switching to an entirely different community that has its own story, is potentially in a completely different map. Oh, wow. So what were you uh, y'all's influences when you were developing Save the Kid the first time? Um, you know, you talked about the old Romero movies, uh -huh. and that was just such a huge influence on on a lot of us um, when we were, when we got into making the first game. Uh, Dawn, in particular, Dawn of the Dead. Um, you know, the the setting, the way it was shot, right. you know, the classic zombies. Um, so many great moments that came out of that 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 we you know looked at and thought like because that was the first one that I can remember that really explored long-term survival not just you know action based in the moment survival they they you know they got out of the the city that they were in and ended up at that mall and kind of set up shop right, right. they were there for a really that's long time that's what the time. whole movie was about was yeah that whole aesthetic of 
You know, what are we going to do to survive? It's not just getting through the night in a farmhouse. It's how are we going to survive this thing long term? And that concept of long term survival was a really big deal. Um, gosh, no play cards in this one either. Yeah, I mean, I can see it's some of the influences. Like even like they choose. They, there's a scene where they specifically choose them all. Then yep. they have to reinforce them all, and they have to like figure out how they're going to keep it, you know, safe. You know, so yeah. Absolutely. There's also that scene that that I think is it gets lost when you when you look at a lot of modern zombie fiction where they're having fun in the mall. Right. They were running around doing the the fantasy of like the whole mall is ours and we're gonna. Yeah you know, drive around in these carts and, and just have fun and go to all the sporting places and I'm gonna put on all the cool clothes and play with all the sports equipment, right? It was it was fun. They get all the cash out of like the cash registers and it's like, <laughs> it means nothing anymore. Yeah, yeah. What's the point of this? Yeah. But in this case, it's you see a cool car, take off with it, go have a joy ride. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And, and we want people to have a little bit of that joy in addition to, oh gosh, full auto. I should check that first. I'm a lousy shot. Um, but to have that joy of being in a, a post-apocalyptic world and feeling like, okay, what what would you do? What would you do? All the rules are out the window. Yeah. yeah. And it was cool, too, to be able to see... I see these climbs have not gotten to any a shorter. different <laughs> community. <laughs> Gotta get up high. How <laughs> different the base looks. Yeah. And so that base is in a sort of, it's a old strip mall. Uh-huh. And that felt like one of the one yeah. of the fun locations set up. Um, we've got, there's like an old baseball stadium. There's, I think there's a bar, at least one bar uh, that you can set up in. Or no, it's a it's an old distillery or a, a brewery. And you get a morale boost from the, uh, the built-in brewery uh, facilities that are there. You can do some stuff there. Well, if you're ever taking requests, we love a pub called the Winchester. <laughs> I don't know if we get sued for that. <laughs> Maybe, possibly. <laughs> We try not to infringe on IP too much when we can avoid it. I do like, you know, even like um, as a fan of the zombie genre and, you know, watch Walking Dead, they have cameo zombies in uh, the Walking Dead series. And in the first game, you, you actually had some Easter eggs that were referenced the Walking Dead graphic novels yes. in it as well. So this predates the Walking Dead uh, TV show, right? Uh, but, the first game was being developed while that was still a thing, oh, mm -hmm. while it was still kind of coming on. So yeah, before. We, I don't think we beat them out of the gate though. They, they, I think the show dropped and then the game came out like uh, half a season later or something like that. Games take a little while to make. They do. Well, so does TV. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. I mean, the graphic novels have been around for a while. I think we knew it was going to be a TV show um, while they were still making it. Yeah, is this what you were looking for? No, it's not. This is something else exciting. This is, well, it's another infestation, and uh, demos like to be embarrassing to their creators. So. <laughs> Does not want to play along? No. Well, that's a good sign that the world is dynamic and organic, right? Yeah, I mean, none, of this, none of this is staged. It would be way more exciting if I had staged it. That's so, pretty What exciting. were some of the other big changes you wanted to make from the first game to the second game? What just wasn't mm -hmm. possible with the first? Um, Gosh, I remember, we were talking about impossible in the first game. Uh, there was an achievement, if I recall correctly, to kill every single kind of zombie. Maybe I, I remember I had to kill a juggernaut with a car, and that took me for freaking ever. Oh to yeah, do that. juggernauts are really hard to yeah. kill with cars. Yeah, uh, and we've maintained that in this one. Oh really? Okay. Oh yeah, uh, juggernauts will destroy cars uh, pretty easily. One of the things that we wanted to make sure that we still had, uh, or one of the things that we wanted to focus on, was the dynamic narrative. We wanted to make sure that people, people felt that. Um, the story being told was theirs. That it wasn't the case that everybody who jumped into the game was going to be experiencing the exact same story regardless of uh, the circumstances or what else happens. This is going to go well. Yeah, promise. Oh, nice! It did go well. It, it, that went okay. I mean, you're not going to make much more noise than the screamer did, right? Uh, no, not much with the grenade, but again, there, there happens to be a, a horde walking outside at the worst possible time, so that, they absolutely heard that grenade. That does actually make me think, too, like, what does what does a, a death in Save the K2 look like? Oh, I'm sure we'll get to that. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how much longer we're going to be recording, but I, I can make that happen if you want. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a plague guy right out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, very wow. obvious, yeah. Yeah, you can uh. definitely tell him when you see him. So you can see, jumped on me, oh, super oh. gross, and uh, now I have this meter filling up over here. Okay. And if that fills up all the way, then you I'm have just gonna blood go and let, let the blood plague happen. Oh. 
And is, is this an indication that you're close to a play card when you run into these? You usually are going to encounter them more frequently yeah, when you're okay. close to play cards. So let's try to get back up here. Live. Try to live. And there we go. So now I am emplagued. You're pretty plaguey right now. I'm pretty plaguey. And you could tell, like, my movement's going to change. Um, not able to function as well, even if I heal myself up a little bit so that I've got a um, reasonable amount of health, um, I'm not gonna recover my full mobility um, because I do have the plague that I'm dealing with as I'm fighting and struggling through the world. Once you get the plague, what does your life expectancy look like? It if nothing else happens, like how long does the plague take to work on you? 180 minutes right now. Okay. And that will get shorter if I continue to, to be exposed to more plague damage. Or things will get ugly. And that timer is also depending on how long you play, right? That's not offline time. No, it's not. It's not offline progression. Gosh, wouldn't that be horrible? Oh well, yeah, be, be uh, mom. Be realistic. Mom, I, can't, I can't turn off the game now. Oh I've yeah, gotta cure my survivor. Way worse than the. Uh, I just gotta get to the next save. Right. So I can't leave. They'll now. die. They'll die. <laughs> all timers now are in game only. They're in game only. Because that, yeah, that would be pretty. Uh, that would be pretty hard to uh, try to maintain that. There's here's another enclave sitting out in the world. Might as well go see what they're up to. Yeah, let's go infect them. <laughs> you want me to go start stuff? Sure. Do you yet know um, what the achievements for the game look like? Uh, we do have a full set of achievements. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can talk about them at all. Sure, makes sense. You know, Jeff just perked up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, well, you know. Uh, we just got a very official shrug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one of my favorite things, too, opening the door to hit zombies when you drive. I'm glad that's still in the game. Oh, yeah, and, and it's <laughs> way better in multiplayer because everybody is opening their doors all the time. <laughs> Basically, it looks like the car is flapping and trying to take <laughs> off when you're playing in multiplayer. All right, let's see what these folks are up to. What's your favorite vehicle to drive in this? Uh, Have you encountered one that just does it for you? Uh, I like the, we have these big four-wheelers, and the reason I like them the best is because they have decent storage, and and they tend to be able right. to get over a, a, a lot of obstacles pretty easily. It's pretty, that's a very boring and practical choice. We also have these really great sort of apocalypse versions of the vehicles where they get, uh... Like Mad Max, kind of? A little Mad Max but out. But you're not infringing on any uh, IP, trademarks, or copyright? Yeah, yeah, it's sh shout out to Mad Max. The cloud, cloud, clown zombie, by the way, is freaking me out a little bit more than little, just your regular zombie. He's a little freaky. But not a freak, right? He's not just a freak. A regular just, zombie, but... There was a kid's party nearby. Sure. Oh, gosh. Getting closer to that death that we were talking about. And part of it's because she just a little wrecked. Lippy. She's yeah. wrecked from this plague. Yeah, that um, fatigue, so when again, you lose that fatigue, it's a big part of, you know, surviving is... You know, they don't fatigue, but you do. Playing smart would be, would involve right now taking her home mm -hmm. and checking her into the medical facility so that she wasn't getting worse with the blood plague. So, a couple things I can do. Uh, I can learn about them. I can trade with this enclave. Um, I can- <laughs> Straight up threaten them. I can threaten them. Well, I'd be like, I will bleed on you if you don't give me what I want. Do you want, do you want the plague? Yeah, so, yeah. like I could threaten them and then give me a second to be like, hey, hey, let's, let's, let's not do this, um, but, at this point, I've kind of crossed the line with them, and uh, so you threaten them. I did. I threatened them. Perfect. And, and uh, after there's a brief sort of little period of time where we give them, where we give them a moment to to be ready to to deal with the fact that you've threatened them, and then they're like, "Okay, you're still here." Right. So you have some time to clear out, or else. Right. Wow. Humans are a lot different. It's it's very different than yeah. fighting fighting zombies, and so these these people are hostile because I threatened them. They can also end up hostile because I had done something horrible, or because you uh, have the blood plague. Oh, this is bad news. So here's a question: If you if they kill you now, how will they get infected with the blood plague? If they kill me, no. But if I were to turn and start biting them, but you know I don't have any control over that at that point, um, they're not going to get blood plague for killing me. Gotcha. Well, did you just drop that flare or that? What is uh, it? Yeah, I dropped the flare, okay. thinking it would be a good distraction for the zombies while Got I was it. dealing with these humans. They're like fireflies. They're attracted to the light. Is that fireflies? Uh, moths. moths? Every, every bug. Like moths. Every bug. Bugs, <laughs> yeah, bugs in general. Wow. Oh, that was super effective. <laughs> and the humans appear to be tougher than zombies as well. They're a little bit tough. Well, yeah. you know. 
Everybody's Oof. this one in particular seems very tough. She's got a grudge. She's They're not harder happy. to fight. Yeah, did you not? I, I would advise generally not just randomly threatening people out in the world. <laughs> seems like a strategy that hasn't paid off for you. Well, there you go. Let's remember they, they did survive. And then also, it seems like you, you get a notification there of this character died, this character died. So those were potential survivors that could have been part of your camp, I assume. Had I gone through the process of befriending them and actually doing some stuff with them, uh, doing some trade, doing some missions, mm -hmm. I could have gotten to the point where the, they would have been uh, amenable to joining the community. And, and what does that look like? When you, you meet someone, you do you help them out? Are you giving them supplies? Are they giving you some kind of like quest or mission, something that they need that will make them more amenable to you? That's exactly it. Like they'll, they'll, they'll be asking for help. Some of it is very specific like, um, hey, one of, our, one of the members of our community is lost. Uh, we, they got lost on the last scavenging run. Can you help us find them? Um, some of it is, um, some of it's a bit more, um, you know, once humans get past the immediate survival stage, they start asking for things. Like my life would be better if I had this bespoke watch. It's shiny, I, wanna, I want this kind of thing. Um, it would look at home in a chic eatery. In the chic eatery. Um, and yeah, after, after doing a few of those, they start to trust you and you develop a better relationship, your trade terms get better, and eventually you might get to the point where you're friendly with them and they say, hey, look, we're, you know, I, one of them might specifically say, I'm looking to join your community. I've got, uh, I've got these skills as a doctor or whatever, and you'll know enough about them that you can kind of pick and choose who you want. And it could, will they join up with you community at a time or individual at a time always? No, right? nice. Oh, I almost landed it. <laughs> yeah, uh, can it land in the bed? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh wow. Um, right now you're picking out individuals. We gotta get a setup for, for bringing whole communities, whole cloth. Because the, the tricky part is, man, bringing three people into your community at once, it really changes the dynamic of the whole thing. Well, if you can handle like, a, like oh. you know, in the range of 10. Possibly, right. depending on the player, then Three's that's a thirty percent change right. right there. Um, but you know that might be the kind of thing you need when you're down to a single survivor left. All right, where are we headed now? I'm thinking I'm just going to get her killed somewhere. Okay. So I thought I'd drive around, find a find a likely spot. When we head over to the other station, Did you yeah, want to do some multiplayer? We, yeah. yeah, when we let's, let's get her see, killed let's, and then let's uh, take a look. Because you said uh, that multiplayer is uh, was one of the biggest things. That, that makes State of Decay 2, State of Decay 2. It's yes, like, absolutely. It just wasn't possible in the first one. Everyone was asking for it. And this is specifically co-op. Specifically co-op multiplayer. We wanted to make sure that we were staying true to the, the things that people were looking for in the original game, which was to play it with their friends, not against their friends. And that's, with a game like this, it's gonna take a lot of doing, because it's not like you can just take a character into someone else's game, because you're not playing a character, you're playing a community. So you take your community into someone's game. You bring one survivor from your community, okay. but you can then swap. Any place that I could change, uh, where I would be able to switch survivors, he's gonna be able to switch survivors with, with his community. But yeah, you are bringing your community members into somebody else's game and putting them in harm's way. And since I'm just trying to get a couple of attention at all. Well, all right, Philgy, I found you in the friends list over here, so I think I'm dropping into your game. Yeah. Uh, well, you ha you have successfully gotten her killed. She's a zombie now. Uh, there was a plague zombie in that mix, and so she the, the it sped up the infection, and now got to the point she's where she was zombie. just tipped over. Yeah. So if you if if so turning is a big thing in this game now too. I it, it sounded like you could bite other survivors. Is that? So what well, you were saying earlier, you said you could bite other survivors. Can it, you turn? Once, once you've been turned, you're a zombie, and you're going to start doing zombie stuff out, outside of your control. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Can you find your zombified survivors out in the world? Oh yeah. Oh really? And you want to because they have potentially a lot of cool stuff. Right. That so they, they, they're carrying so they still around. have the gear that was on them. Yep. They still have the gear that was on them. So right. really, it's your responsibility to find them and put them down. Yeah. So, so now I'm in the and game as Fido. Oh, there we go. There you are over here. I see you right there. I'm gonna come, oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you were down, down below. Where are we? We are up on a roof. The roof oh. does have a tent, though. It's it does have nice. a tent. Somebody oh, was surviving off. up here. No, oh, you made it down. Come down. Well, that's one way. The ladder would have been too convenient. <laughs> All right, so let me see the map. Let's see, what should we go do? So you've just picked up as another survivor, same game. 
Same community. Same community. Uh, there's Alicia. Oh. Rest in peace. Where, where? Where is this? Oh, you can't see it on my screen. I'm looking at my community screen and there's, oh. a, little, there's uh, a little memorial. Little, little gravestone. Very sad. But now she needs to be hunted down. We should find her. She was right around here. I think we we're at the gas station. So as a person who's joined your game, I can't access your community? No, you're, you're playing with your community because gotcha. that's, that's your guys. That's your business. And now, now he's joined into your game. And so he's brought his community of survivors with him. Uh, he's playing one at any time, but yep. he can switch between them. There she them. is. Oh, oh, look at you, Lisa. Sad she's a plague zombie too. Cause she got, she got turned by the blood plague. But she, at least she's wearing a nice jacket so you can't see all the flesh bubbles. Oh, uh, it's a bummer. Uh, so the red eyes indicate she's a plague zombie? Yeah. Oh. And wow. this, is, this is one of the reasons you don't want your survivors to turn into plague zombies because especially if that happens back at your community, like that just starts to, to make things right, worse. Right, then you, you get more and more infections. Exactly. Right, so horrible. how infected did you Double get tap. just from that attack? Uh, almost a third of my of the the meter that I have, and that's going to be different for every survivor. They might have some uh, immunities that that help them uh, not get infected as quickly. Um, right now, I'm going to dump I'm going to dump a couple things so I can take. She had a really nice gun. I will honor her memory by taking her by gun. taking her stuff by taking her stuff. Best but only memory. the best stuff. Only the best. Rest in peace. Wait, not the boombox. I think I have boom boxes. I oh, don't know, I don't. I'm taking the boom box. You Why should not? take the boom box. So what can Bernie take back to his game? Uh, anything he's carrying he can take back. Um, at any outpost or at the base he can, uh, ha he has access to his supply locker and he can take um, any of the stuff that he finds. The blue containers are gonna belong oh. to him. Get off of me. See, this is what happens. I'm supposed to be paying attention. Instead, he's on his own. Any any of the blue containers, those belong to him, and we add those in. So it isn't something where when Ooh. somebody shows up into your game, they're taking away resources that mm -hmm. you would have normally been getting. They got their own stuff. And then anything I decide to, if I was like, you know what, I got that other cool gun, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this one on the ground. It's really cool, you want it, you should take it. He would be able to pick that up and take that back to his game as well. So is, it, there a, is there a friendly fire? No. Okay, so We're, someone can't come in and grief you. No, well, not really. Not directly. Uh, troll, trolls always find a way. Oh, always true. find a way. So one of the things we, we get questions about, um, did we do we do any difficulty scaling in multiplayer? Oh, here's a play card. Finally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see the, I see the red. Crows spinning around here at night. You'd see this column of red kind of miasma. And what's the day-night cycle like? How long is it? Uh, it's approximately 90 minutes. Um, the night is a little bit shorter. Um, the day because it's super stressful. Oh my lord! Yeah. So what what happens during the night? The zombies get more there's, aggressive, stronger. There's more fast faster. ones. There's more fast ones. So, so is this like a super infestation? Is that what I'm about to experience here? Yeah, yeah, basically. So uh, you might want to, um, you know, that boombox you had. Yeah. Why don't you bring that out here? I cycled through it to with the right, uh, right, right, right on the D-pad. Oops. Why don't you set that up out here? What does oops mean, Bernie? Never mind. I, I just pull up emotes. I was I was trying to go backwards. Oh gosh, yeah. It was just right to cycle through. All right, set up the boombox right here. Yeah, and then you'll be able to trigger that when we're ready, and then the zombies will show up. Okay. So if you act like a zombie, they don't know. Uh, they totally know. Okay. <laughs> I figured you might smell different. <laughs> All right. All right. So when when I say go ahead and set that thing off, and we'll we'll uh, see what we can do. And it's both the bumper buttons to do that. Yeah. Hit it. Oh, there's a bloater outside. This is gonna be great. I think I got it. And then come in and, and hang out. It's a good by, time. I think, I think by hang out he means please help. I lost my network connection, so I'm coming back in. All right. Let me find you here. Take your time. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. There you go. All right, I am joining on you now. I'm gonna head back out and wait for you to come back. This is this is one of those things where if you're if you're not Yeah, but that one doesn't even have any arms. What's he gonna do to you? Uh nothing now. I also got a tip on the menu coming in. It says unjamming a firearm is part of one of the skills. Yep. So your firearms can jam now, huh? Yep. 
Wow. They could actually jam in the first game. It was just really rare. Oh, okay. It's not so rare in this one. They jam up quite a bit because um, it's been a little bit longer. It's This is basically uh, 15, 18 months past the events of the first game. Mm -hmm. Weapons maintenance hasn't gotten any better. So if you have if you have the, the expertise, uh, the specialization that you're talking about, it allows you to unjam weapons in the field. You know, if you think about it, that just makes you kicking people out of your community that much worse because they survived. They survived the first game and another 12 to 18 months and now you're just putting them out in the cold. Well, if they survived then they should be able to do fine out in the field now, right? Oh, so I, was in the, I, I joined you in the play card house. That's, yeah. Was... No, yeah, you come to me. All right, I'm coming to you. All right, I'm going to set up another distraction unless you still have some boom boxes. Uh, let me see what I got. I got a smoke bomb. Can you stand outside and just Looks hold like a, a bandage box above your head? And a grenade. <laughs> no. What's just a bag? Turn yourself like a... into the trap. Yes. The bait. Bait mode. Yeah, what's, what's that? What's the bag that looks like a running person on it? Uh, that's that's super? snacks. It'll it'll fill up your uh, your stamina if you need it. Gotcha, okay. I'm gonna set this down and then we're gonna run inside and start wailing on this thing. It's right there in the hallway. You see it? Let me see. It's kind of this red pulsing. Oh yeah. Really gross looking organic thing. Alright. Go. All right, what is that that you just set down? That's some fireworks. I see it oh. there. So that'll go off in just a second here. So it'll draw any of the zombies out of Oh, the I house, see it here. Hopefully. It'll pull them out of the house, hopefully distract them from uh, from coming in and dealing with the stuff that... All oh, right, this thing you want to back up? Ba get out of here? Back up. No, just back up. Oh, got it. Good to use your... Uh, Explosive consumables. I am going to throw some fire in a second, and it's going to go everywhere. This thing is tough. Grenade going out. Look at that. We get it? Yeah. You, you destroyed it. It said I earned a multiplayer reward. Oh, and I got a sweet achievement. Ashley, it's not on my account. <laughs> you know that means you have to 100% it now. Yeah. No, but it wasn't my account, so it's like, ah. Uh, uh, so it's meaningless. I can't, I can't lord that over my friends until the game comes out. You earned the achievement for somebody else. Yeah, I got 100% of the achievements in the first one. I remember I, I went back and played through uh, the entire storyline again because I missed one uh, with some guy. It was like a hostage situation, and uh, I, I, I just didn't do it the way that... Uh, I didn't complete it properly, so I didn't get the achievement. So I had to go back and play through again to get it. Well, so that's an important question, though, for completionists. Are there missable achievements in this one? Uh... That is a great question that I'm totally unprepared to answer. Uh, <laughs> it shouldn't be the case that you can miss anything because there's nothing that's going to be dependent on story. Um, there might be some stuff where you have to play through multiple communities in order to pull it off because it might, it might, might, they might be gated on the leader type that you choose or the way that you decide to uh, wrap up your community's legacy. So now that we've defeated this Plague Heart, what does that mean for us in the map? Does this area become more accessible to us? Yeah, so the the number of plague zombies that were being generated kind of okay. in the immediate vicinity, that's going to clear up a little bit. Um, the uh, Eventually, one of your major goals for, um, for the story of your community is clearing out all of the plague hearts in the, in the town. And once you've done that, all of the plague zombies will be gone. You know, and Ash, one of the things you were talking about earlier with the different bases and choosing a new base, sometimes you end up choosing a new base because the storage becomes such an important thing when you venture further and further right. out that you have to get more centralized where well, there's stuff. Exactly, or yeah, you want to be closer to the stuff that you're doing. So uh, I don't have a leader for my community right now. Uh, these are kind of the options that I have from the heroes that are in my in my community. So is Richard who you've been playing? This is who I've been playing recently. He wants to be a builder. Um, that's gonna give certain benefits, access to certain facilities, but it also sets the stage for the future. His philosophy is gonna drive uh, what takes this community forward, um, how they leave their mark on this post-apocalyptic world. All right, so he wants to basically build, presumably reinforce defenses and try to create a life inside Keep people safe, area. yeah. And Allison is a traitor. She wants to focus on interactions with other enclaves, other survivors, and try to make sure that we've got good relationships with She's other She's in folks. a networker. She's a networker, yeah, exactly. Um, and there are two other leader types, uh, Warlord, uh, peace through seems, strength. You know, seems pretty uh, self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah. And then the sheriff, who's very much kind of a law and order. Uh, these are the options we have. to Do either of these folks appeal to you? Uh, you know, I'm liking Richard's philosophy of being able to to build your community, build your your safe house and your safe location, and go with it. Let's let's go with him. Pull the trigger. Besides, he's been doing a great job. So do a good work. Wild. Yeah. 
Um, but even though he's the leader now, it doesn't make him any safer than anyone else. Uh, the possibilities of him, uh, so that that's an example. That having a leader of a specific type is probably going to be tied to different achievements. Um, hey, Foggy. Yeah. What do the yellow icons mean, like on the trunk of a car? Or some containers, they look like they have a yellow icon on them. Let's they see. might be mine. Oh, really? Okay. Yours will all be in blue. Yeah, yours will be blue. Gotcha. Uh, so now that we have a leader, um, our primary goal has changed to clear the town of play cards. Oh, Once we've done that, we'll yeah. move into what this leader's legacy is going to be for the community. So one of the reasons to go after play cards as well was to get samples. Yes, and so I grabbed you could, some. You could cure anyone in your community who got the blood plague but hasn't fully succumbed yet. So That's you got right. some of those samples. That's those right there. Great. Yeah, a little bag of samples. So basically what happens to you, at least it doesn't have to happen to the next person. To hopefully anyone else. As long as I have enough meds in my community, I will be able to go into my, does this base not have, Terrace Infirmary. So this was a built-in urgent care uh, that was part of the strip mall. Um, it's currently uh, damaged and I need to repair it. Um, that's gonna go very quickly, presumably because somebody left a cheat building in here. What? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna nuke this. Wow. So I was even just switching to a found a weapon in a container, and it showed me did the comparison. I had like eight different stats for just a weapon. Yeah. Like knockdown ability. Uh, durability. durability yeah. uh, 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 dismemberment's gonna end up being a thing. So I I just picked up a, a case of food. So I have a pack of food on my back now. Yep. Um, which you know really important resource. If I leave, does that mean I get to take it back to my game? Uh, I believe if you have it on your back, you might take it back to your game, but like if you deposit it back at the base, it's my base and you'd be depositing it into my storage. Uh -huh. um, but you're gonna get a ton of resources and, and other cool stuff when you go back into your game. And you're gonna have a lot of influence uh, because one of your primary rewards that you're getting right now as we're playing is influence. Um, and you don't get a lot of that when you're playing solo. You get a lot more of it when you're playing multiplayer. Mm -hmm. So there is incentive to buddy up to go into someone else's game to help them out. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're, we're gonna, um, there's gonna be, um, there are special multiplayer rewards that you can, oh boy, that's freaking out a little bit. Let's take a different car. <laughs> oh, cool, I can change seats. Did you, do, does it yeah, not, is it not doing that on yours? You are definitely changing seats. That is the thing that you are doing. No, yes. I couldn't see it. Oh, yeah, no, on, a, on, seats. on our screen it was, f you were flipping you out. You were possessed. Uh, was I? Uh, we could try getting in one more time, let's see what happens. Sure. This is an old build. Let me see if I can get in I'm the, curious now. I'll get in the back. No, nope. you're still freaking nope. out. It does not like this car you at all. You do not like the truck. All right, I can't see that at all. It looks totally normal. It looks fine on yours. Yeah. There you go. You look like Jacob, Jacob's Ladder on mine. <laughs> so with <laughs> games like this are always tough. They're, they're open world, they're emergent, they're, every person's experience is gonna be really different. Right. How, how difficult is it to hunt down and tackle all those little things that you don't know like why they would happen? Oh, it's, and they don't make sense. It's nearly impossible. QA hates games like these because like, like the quests can start anywhere. An enclave can be spawned anywhere. You're still... Am I? Let me try changing seats out. real quick. Does that work? Let's try opening a door. How do I do that? Why? Oh, <laughs> that. that was a guess. That was a guess. <laughs> I mean, it worked. The door, You're, that, that is the true. door did open. The door did freaking, open. Mission accomplished. You're not freaking out oh, anymore. Oh, zombies. I'm going to count that as a success. Uh-oh. This is, oh, jeez. You're supposed to watch my back while I'm looking at the map. Oh, is that what you're doing? Sorry. Uh, yeah, maybe I should announce that. Um, so communication is key here, is what I'm getting. Communication is key. Uh, and what we were talking about before. Uh, Use your headsets, people. It's very difficult to do QA on a game that is so dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. These missions can be cast anywhere. Uh, they have to work on three different maps. They have to work in different types of buildings. A lot of our systems are based on, um, this mission will say, give me a house. There's no witch house, just a house. And once that house has been located, we'll turn it on and the mission is going. It's very difficult for QA to say, okay, well, what if this mission went from this house and then this other house? Oh, that causes problems if you go from this one to this one, but not this one to this one. Yeah, it was just that cars it's bugged out. Open this is a better car anyway. Like nice that's... move. Look at that. Thank you. It's pretty stylish. Well, J-turn. It always seems like a challenge in the entire genre of the open games. World. I'm sure it causes so many headaches too. Just nothing. Make it doesn't make sense why why the truck? 
why is the what is this a meal? Oh, there's that? some blood Whatever plague this is. zombies. It, it's a small sports car. <laughs> Sorry, yes, n this unaffiliated this small vehicle that not with any particular uh, brand. There you go. Yes, not infringing on any trademarks, copyrights, etc. Just car. This little car doesn't little make fat. any sense why it would be different than the truck, but it is. Any resemblance to any car living or dead is merely coincidental. <laughs> totally coincidental. So we could scavenge this place. We're, I mean, honestly, the game has, uh, you played a lot of the first one. It has a slower pace to it. Um, when, you're, when you're sort of playing it correctly and not just smashing around looking for trouble like we were doing earlier. Um, Which we found successfully. Success, mission accomplished. Um, you're trying to survive. You're trying to locate uh, resources that your community needs. Uh, you're trying to build up your base. You're trying to keep people alive. Now, what's your long-term goal? Long term, uh, the, the goals that I was talking about earlier where we're getting into clearing the town of play cards, that is like my, the main thing that we've got going on. But in addition to that, um, Allison would like to uh, look for information about her prepper aunt. Uh, who She's always networking, that Allison. Allison's always networking. Um, and then because we, we uh, uh, Ollie is another guy who would be looking to train. So everybody has personal goals. You have your kind of primary community goal. You have external goals. These are going to be things from uh, the other enclaves that exist in the world. They want stuff. They have specific things that they're trying to accomplish. Um, they're traders. This oh. is sort of a timed thing where that uh, that trader is going to be available. We can go to him. He'll have rare high-end stuff. Um, and those only come up like once a week or something. Are you all right? Yeah. We're I, doing uh, the classic move. I was just testing to see what the smoke grenade did, and it's not a smoke grenade. It lit the entire front of the house on <gasps> fire, so that's okay. Because I was curious. I was like, what is a smoke grenade going to do against zombies? But then, nope, it's an incendiary grenade. So this thing over here, this little, that's a container that you can open right there? Uh, yeah, the yellow one. Yeah, got it. So we 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 have distinct loot. Well, so that's to keep you from dropping into his game, stealing all his resources, and yeah. then yeah, that's great. And then heading out and taking yeah. it all. We wanted to we wanted to be a very true co-op experience where yeah. where you are incentivized to bring somebody else into the, into your game, and you're not worried about them taking anything. Like sure. So does that mean that there are currently more resources than there would be? Yes. A little bit more. Not tons. A little bit Just of resources. A little, little something. I want to make sure everybody everybody has cool stuff to find. Uh, and that contribute. was really cool. I, I just fast searched and, of course, messed it up. And there was a zombie outside the window, and you could see him react to it. Turned around. Yeah. What was that? Gross. Oh! Get out of here. Sounds like you're having a good time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so great. It, it really quickly just kind of gets into that state of decay mode where... Uh -huh. You're, you're searching through these houses, you're finding cool stuff, you're thinking about what you're gonna be able to do with it, and you get kind of a loop of, let me look at my base, what's going on, okay, I need food, or uh, morale is low, how do I wanna solve that problem? Make a plan, and then try to execute your plan, and then deal with the consequences of your plan going uh, sideways, which so it will inevitably. Are there any parts of the game that can't be played in co-op, or is it 100% you can go through... There's one like, part of the game. Start to finish and... One part of the game that you can't play in co-op, and that's a tutorial. Well, that a makes sense. After the tutorial, you can play the rest of the game multiplayer. So you can basically go through the oh. entire game <laughs> as partners if you want to. Yeah. So there's a horde down the road here. I want to go check it out. Let's get it. I want to see what this horde looks like. Are you just going to run? Well, no. I mean, I'm waiting for my ride. I'm going to call oh. you Little Mac. All right, and I'm going to follow get in you car. in this car. Get in the car. Get in the car. <laughs> Could have done the the classic. There, now I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is what this is what multiplayer in State of Decay is <laughs> all about. It said it was there. There. Yeah. Oh, we passed these in the way in. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, Come here, you. <laughs> these things aren't made for off road. No. You're getting some some really good spins though. I'm just never going to stop opening my door. The number of cars that I see wrecked because somebody got a zombie oh, that was awesome. and they're freaked out. And they're just like, I got to kill it. Oh, that was that was my bad. You should have had that one. There uh, we go. 
mission accomplished. I love the uh, zombie versus automobile physics that you have here. It's fun when it works. It's like when they when they get pinned to the hood and then we hit that guardrail and he went flying off. That's fantastic. Sometimes you'll you'll run over them too and they give that really satisfying like thump thump as they get sucked under the wheels. Then we had that uh, helmet that we knocked off of. I guess it was a soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Military zombie. All right. Let's see where else we can get in some trouble. So you got these oh, you're these pro three different maps. Yes. How are each of them different? Uh, so the main the main differences are sort of the biomes that they're in. We have one that is more open farmlands. We have one that is sort of uh, foothills, early mountains, and then we have one that is more um, sort of American Southwest, uh, deserty. Not quite deserty, but but drier and and uh, more arid. Um, and the the primary differences that come from that are. Um, the kind of resources that you find, uh, you're gonna get a bit more food in the farmlands, you're gonna get more uh, meds and materials out in the arid, arid and in the, in the foothills you end up getting more, I think, ammo. Um, and it's, it's mainly just, there's cosmetic differences, obviously, from, uh, ooh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Hey, what's oh, up, dudes? No. I hope they don't hate I was us the passenger, I had nothing to do with it. That wasn't me, that wasn't me. Oh, they might not be shooting at us. No. Oh. I'm not shooting. I thought they were shooting at us because I ran over one of them. <laughs> I mean, that would explain a lot. Remember, they've survived first game plus 12 to 18 months. They don't have time for people just right. driving like crazy. So. They're not here to mess around. But you might find somebody like this and go, oh man, I really want that hoodie person in my... <laughs> or you just really want that. So I can or trade with them. them. I can try to enlist a follower. But Only you can get information can about what's going on with them. She's not actually yeah. that great. The hoodie is pretty much the coolest thing about the her. The coolest thing. But then they got somebody else who's got computer programming, and that might be really useful in certain contexts. And well, so as you've got a builder for a leader, maybe you want to build like a nice safe compound with automation. Right. You you know, need maybe maybe some nice voice control for the lights. You need somebody with a programming background. You can see it's starting to get a little dark out here. Yep. I'm going up to do scout around a little bit. Sunset's kicking in. You want to go to this? There's an abandoned clinic nearby. Sure. Is, is uh, um, like for, uh, medicine's a resource, right? Medicine is a resource. Are there what are the resources in Save Decay Two? Uh, food, meds, materials, mm -hmm. ammo, fuel, and that's it. Yeah, I hit them all. Food, ammo, fuel, meds, and materials. There's also parts, which is kind of a sub-resource. And that's the, that's the other column. Yeah, and you're using those for, for things like crafting or repairing your weapons. This place is locked up tight, and yet it seems like someone's been here. Yeah, it's been ransacked before. A lot of things can happen in a, a year. Nicely done. I'm scoping stuff out up here. You are, you're outside. I'm in the cell. I'm on top of the cell tower. Oh, okay. So you're you're doing some searching. The so nice if, thing I, is if I'm uncovering stuff, do you get to see it? You add stuff to my map. Oh, cool. Okay. So you can have like jobs. Like I can be scout. Yeah. Yeah. So you pop it up there. It's like okay, you you do the scouting real quick. I'm gonna clear this place out, and then if I start screaming, get ready to come down here quick. <laughs> I could also let you know like oh, there's some. Uh, there's some containers in here for you to search because I see yours and I go, okay, there's blue ones. Those are for Bernie and, and, and I'm going to have my stuff. And if, when you get up to four players, um, having that kind of communication and talking about what's going on is really important. So you're in the, the same game, same world. You've got your community players, but you could theoretically just go off completely separate places and do whatever you like. Not super far, within, within a certain range of each other. Okay. I'm just going to take this outpost and you can see that adds daily meds income to my my community. Coming on down. It's reflected here as well, so plus one meds today. And um, the nice thing is I can always find you on my heads up display. I can always see you. Right. So I can go right to you. That's nice. So now it's dark. Okay, now I have food and you have medicine. That's cool, I can see the medicine on your back. Yeah, and if I wanted to I could I could just drop that on the ground and let you carry it. Whoa. No, it I'm, looked like it exploded because you shot right behind me. So these guys are nastier at night, right? 
You get more fast zombies at night. Ugh. Gosh, and they're harder to hit because it's dark. Get out of here. Reload. All right, well, I have the food. Should I, should I drop it and get this medicine? Oh, no, I'll grab the medicine. Okay. I'll throw it in the trunk of this car. And this is kind of this is kind of state of decay where, you know. Yep. Hey, you got the food? Cool. I've got these meds. Let's throw them in the back of the car and check one more place and head back to the base. It's not always... Uh, it's not always flashy and exciting. Sometimes survival is just like, oh, cool! I found uh, I found a bag of uh, a bag of food. And we're going to be able to take that back to our base. We're going to be able to eat. Thank you for helping keep my community alive. Yeah, a lot of times you get to maintain the community, keep the community alive, and then go uh, once you get them set, you go off and do something new. And then a siege happens, and your base gets attacked. If I recall correctly, that's the way it worked for me. That might, well, you might seem be like a loud player. <laughs> you, you are pretty loud. I am loud. So while Bernie's in your game and he's got his community. Uh oh, yeah. there's a uh, blood plague zombie right there. Just leave it alone. I'll go with you. Oh, is it a plague heart? Uh, no, it's the zombie. Blood, oh, just, just one blood. zombie? Yeah. Does the blood plague meter go down at all on its own? No. If there, okay, so it and basically until you cure it. You have or, to take care of it. Or yeah. get it entirely. It stays as it's. Yep. So is the cure something that you can build in the uh, infirmary? Yes. Okay. I actually made some earlier because we had enough uh, we had enough resources that I was able to, to craft that. So h had Alicia not already died horribly, we would have been able to take care of her. Nice. So while Bernie's in your game and he's got uh, his community here oh. as a resource. Oh, look at that. That's us out of gas. Here as a resource oh, no. for him, if one of his survivors dies in your game, it dies in his game as well. Oh yeah. If you die in the Matrix, you die in real life. And your friends won't reload for you. <laughs> no, gosh, can you? Well, turn off your game, turn it off! Question, can they even? Uh, I, I bet if somebody got to the uh, got to the power switch fast enough, we're not, we're not trying to make... We, we're not trying to make people miserable. I think if somebody got got to their power switch fast enough, that would probably be okay. But, but maybe take your second favorite survivor and it's just someone else's game. So yeah, if that yeah. happens, just, just scream Xbox turn off as loud as you can. It'll come through your friend's headset. If you're rocking a connect, yeah. <laughs> God, that was such a great troll move when when they first came, came out and uh, everybody had their stuff set up. I would go over to people's places, Xbox turn off. Had some people playing in the lunchroom once. And just so you know, every time we say it, it's on somebody's Xbox is trying to shut oh, off right no. now. He's watching this video, probably. Oh, I'm sorry. Ashley, we'll have to bleep that. We're not, we're not, uh, yes. That's okay. I order some of our, uh, on our podcast, I'll order uh, products via people's Alexas now. <laughs> Whenever we have low sales of, mostly, of yeah, something. Mostly you, you make uh, everyone's Alexa order a million dollars, but, right? The card game, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> that's you fantastic. You gotta be careful because even just that's saying a, the name of it's driving devices. That's a all over first the world. world problem right there. Yep. I was listening to a podcast and they bought <laughs> bought something over my. Thankfully, voice we now have a year's worth of laundry detergent. So with the day night cycle being about ninety minutes, night being a little bit shorter as well, fifty forty. Uh, let's see. Uh, night night like the darkest part of night is about. 20 minutes total. Okay, so it's you, it's considerably shorter. It's considerably shorter. So like dawn and dusk take about uh, 20 minutes as well. If I'm, I'm ballparking, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's like 20, 20, 20, and then day is 30. If that maths out, which I think it does. What is that? Oh, did you attack the deal? No, I'm gonna go in this so the specific goal that I would be pursuing right now is working on Plague Hearts because, again, like I, the needs of my community are pretty well in hand. Food isn't a consideration, but... Uh, but you're okay, and your main ob objective, the, the objective your leader wants, which is you, because you're the leader. I'm the leader. Says, clear out the Plague Hearts. Clear out the Plague Hearts. And if you're off doing whatever, will your other survivors... They're kind of taking care of the day to day. Tasks. Okay, they won't prioritize tasks to fulfill that. That's really up to you. That's up to you. And they'll just try and keep things running. Right. Exactly. They're they're making sure that the that everything stays ship shape. Well, you know that's what it means to be a leader. Yeah. Get out there and lead. Delegate. So I'm sure in uh in designing the game, you guys built out the lore of the world, like the origins of zombies yep. and and everything. How much of that did you put in the game? Um. 
bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. We've got hints and uh, some tantalizing information so that folks can do a little bit of theory crafting. Yeah. And what percentage of the, the lore and world building would you say is related via uh, quests, dialogue, interactions with characters, and how much of it do you encounter passively throughout the world? That's a bit of a mix. Um, I would say that you're probably gonna get most of it through world building. Looks like there's more uh, blood plague zombies coming from that direction up the road. Oh yeah. Where maybe, maybe we should go this way. What's this way? Nothing. Hmm. What was that? Uh, it's a plague zombie. It's fine. It's fine. It's all. It's fine. It's fine. This is a plague zombie at night. No big. Oh, I'm just a horrible shot. So that uh, that made some Another significant changes to your meter. Couple are coming. Yeah. He, he got me a few a few times real good. Oh, when they get in the light from your flashlight, it's so creepy. With the glowy eyes. Yeah. yeah. Or just, you know, when they, the, the eyes are what you see from far away, but then they get in the light and all. Which, you know, is a really great design element when you're, when you're supposed to be getting headshots. Mm -hmm. But it's still creepy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm totally out of ammo. That's all right. You're great with a bladed weapon. Or you were, you were, you were great with a bladed weapon. There was no, no close enough wood to knock on before that was uttered. <laughs> yep. So you're out of ammo. Out of ammo. Your melee weapon just broke, which is I'm going a whole other point here that there's wear and tear. Out, yeah, out of ammo. Weapons have durability. My car's out. Our car's out of gas. Uh, there's a it's fueling. It's the middle of the night. It's the middle of the night. There's a fueling station up the road. This is this is how state of decay happens. You set out. It was daytime. We're gonna do one thing real quick. One thing leads to another thing. Leads to another thing. And then you're out of gas. It's 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 the middle of the night. What there's was that? Plague zombie. Oh my god. There's That's a, a big dude. And I have nothing. I got a shotgun. Oh lord. Rest in peace. Oh no, you're the leader. It can't happen like this, but it did. Every oh, time. he's messing you up. It did. Uh, yeah, Bernie, you might want to run. We should have stuck together is what should have happened. Richard is dead. Happened. Richard's very dead. <laughs> uh, and that's a juggernaut. Are you up for taking on a juggernaut? You got any boost here? Let's see what this guy does. We're over here. All right. Where the fire is. All right, Allison, RIP building. We're on to networking. All right, coming. Yeah, network. <laughs> it's time to network. Oh. Can you network the juggernaut? Oh boy, that wasn't good. Uh, he's add him on social media. Yeah. <laughs> see if he'll uh, see if he'll like my tweets. Oh, get him. He went. Allison gets burning fiery revenge and is on fire herself. Yeah, but she knows stop, drop, and roll. Yes, because she networks, so Look she got at that, that information. Right. Yes. She got That's definitely where that information came yes. from. But well done, juggernaut cool. down. That was cool. It was a melee execution on juggernaut. Itself. That was pretty good. On a burning juggernaut, no less. Rest in peace, Richard. Yeah, that was a tough end for Richard. Yeah, that no. is now two survivors we've gone through. All right, so he's around here somewhere. I believe my yeah, pieces are jammed. Yeah, there's 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 Richard. <gasps> there are the pieces and of Richard. And there's Richard. Oh. So is there anything I can do to unjam this gun? Uh, do you have that specialization? I don't know. I think actually told me that I was like, I was up for specialization, so maybe I can just get it right now. If you press down on your D-pad, uh huh, and uh, left bumper. Got it. It'll tell you uh, which of your skills are ready for specialization. Fighting wits and cardio are. Shoot, is shooting part of unjamming? Shooting is part of unjamming. Rah, okay. So I'm going close combat. 100%. Rest of this time. Yeah. Well, Dawn's, uh, Dawn's coming soon. Just hold on till Dawn. That's what I get for trying to upgrade. It's zombies in the area. Oh, yeah. They're all over. I just upgraded Allison into this sweet drop kick, though. Oh, that was pretty cool. All right, I got a drop kick. Pop. Yes. So this night's lasting a pretty good long time. Yeah, it hasn't been twenty minutes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, if you think about it, night night really half. just kind of started. So besides looting, besides looting Richard, there's really nothing else you can do for him now. And Johnny if you check your in. community, you've got a lot of graves. I do. I have a lot of sadness in my community right now. I'm just gonna get one of these, get some more ammo. Yeah. Is there any get sort of it. mental effect on the other survivors of the community oh, when a bunch of people start dying? Absolutely. If I look at my morale right now, they're, they're, they're grie grieving. Allison is grieving for Richard. 
Really? Allison's Because she upset. just, look, she just got a promotion. She, well, <laughs> she hasn't got her promotion yet. Uh, Allison loves to be scared. Why isn't she happy seeing this corpse that's been torn in half? Well, she's got a plus three to it. She's just not thrilled, maybe, because she knows the corpse. Maybe oh, right. I... I dropped out. So now I didn't, I didn't go back and get my case of food that I left in the car, so I don't get to take that back to my game. You do not get to take that back to your game with you. Maybe Fogey will drive it over in the car to my game. <laughs> go, well, just drive it to it. your game. So now that uh, uh, Allison likes taking risks, she loves being scared, she's out in the world, we've got a water outpost. There's, there's good she things. She seems like an extreme sports type. She's, you know, she likes to get out there. She likes she to meet a, a lot of people. Kick. she got a sweet drop kick. <laughs> now she does. And, uh, you know, she likes to meet people and hang out. So and, she has, in, she, and she has one less friend now. In playing this game, how frequently would you find you end up changing characters? Have you been through a play, like a, through a playthrough with like basically one the character? Same group? Uh, or do you find that's extraordinarily difficult? I have a hard time keeping people alive. Uh, and, and a lot of that's just down to the fact that I've been working on this game for so long. And so I play a little bit haphazardly. Mm -hmm. um, when I play for realsies, uh, I'm super cautious. Um, there's a fuel can. Um, so I don't, I don't think I've ever had a community get all the way through to uh, the end game without at least one death. Um, and they usually come from surprises like that, mm -hmm. um, where I was like, oh, everything's fine, we're just gonna pop over here and get a gas can. Oh, there's this military outpost on the way there. Let's uh, let's just do that real quick, and then suddenly I'm, everybody's dead. Just kidding, dead. we're in pieces. Yeah. Um, so it, uh, it's a difficult game, but it's not, it's not unfair. That was totally my fault, uh, that I wasn't paying attention, that I, got so far ahead of you that I wasn't, that we weren't able to work together to deal with right. that situation. Yeah. Because we handled it just fine when we were working together. Yeah. But uh, up until that point, I was just kind of running willy-nilly. Like, hey, no problem. You're right behind me. I I heard, and I heard it, too. I was like, what was that? And you said, oh, I think it's a plague zombie. And you said, oh, no. And then you saw it coming at you. Yeah, it was it was, it was was too late. So our... Um what are the, uh, can, you, can you talk a little bit about the... There are zombies in the walls. That's, they're setting up for podcasts. Oh, are they? <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about the different freaks? Have we talked about that yet? Like, what, can, can you, I can, can say I'm what's happy in to here? talk about the different freaks. So uh, we just saw the Juggernaut. Right. Uh, he's big. Uh, fire doesn't bug him that much. Uh, so lighting him on fire just kind of makes him angry. Uh, he will destroy vehicles. Uh, he will tear your survivors in half. You're not paying attention. Uh, very difficult to take care of, take care of without uh, some pretty heavy ar artillery. Um, there's the feral, which we haven't encountered, which would be terrifying right now at night. They're mm -hmm. super fast, very agile, hard to shoot. Um, bit of a glass cannon. If you manage to land a headshot on them, they're gone. But like, landing that headshot hard. is really tough. Yep. Shotguns are really good against them. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're very, very fast. And usually the only warning you have is just a little screech right before they yep. tackle you. Yep, and they're um, on top of you. Screamer, we mm -hmm. saw a Screamer earlier. Uh, usually you're gonna see them as part of infestations. Uh, they like to bring other zombies, or, uh, nearby zombies to help them out. And then the Bloater, which we didn't really see much of. We saw the clouds left behind. I think you might have encountered one. I had one, yeah. Um, you can't get anywhere near them. They just blow up and leave this noxious cloud behind them. Nice move. The uh, Yeah, I had, a, uh, I had one on the street oh, and I shot him from a distance and got him to explode. Didn't have to get too close. Oh wow, look at that. What a move. I'm a lousy shot. But you're good with the drop kick. Real good with the drop kick. Didn't spend too much time watching uh, professional wrestling wow, enough time at the range. Explosions do a number on uh, on zombies, huh? Dismembered all of them. Oh boy. But it also made a lot of noise, it so did, yeah. lots of friends coming in. And there's your vehicle, so you can now refuel it. I can gas up and uh, try to get back to base. I have so many stories that, that start with, I went out to do X, and then I ran out of gas, and I barely made it home. Or I lost somebody on uh, out in the field, and then I made it home, and now my community is down. And these are these fun stories, too. It's like we're driving along, run out of gas, and all of a sudden it's night, you know? And then we have to fight through the night. We lose a survivor, you know? And, uh, well, I lost my case of food, but only because I didn't go back and get it. But those are the fun stories of, you know, you think, oh, I got enough time, I can just run out and do this real quick, and then something goes wrong, and suddenly all hell breaks loose. What's the scarcity of resources like? Um, it depends uh, on the map that you're in a little bit and the area that you're in in that map. Um, 
but they don't replenish. So when you've cleared an area out of food, you've gone to all the restaurants, grocery stores, and quick marts around that place, it's not coming back. So, so if you get more survivors in your uh, headquarters, then you're then gonna, you're going to go through more of those finite resources. And you're moving sooner. Back up so I can park this car in the spot and unload all these resources. Oh, cool! So you can use uh, you click the right thumbstick and honk the horn. Is that what it does? Oh yeah, to make some noise. That's cool. So you can draw zombies out. So if somebody wants to, if you if you got good multiplayer setup going, you'll have somebody sitting outside. Uh, you'll have somebody sitting outside. Banging mm -hmm. the horn, making noise, and trying to deal with the zombies while somebody's inside ransacking the place. There's a lot of different kind of coordination uh, acti things that you can get into that mm -hmm. will make your life a better or easier. Like when we did the play card, and I was like, hey, throw down the boom box or make some noise outside. Then we're going to go inside. Right. That's going to pull these guys off of it. So there are and a lot of And when you coordinate, it seems like to make that. it a lot easier. It, it's a lot better when you're paying attention. The, the tricky thing is every time you kind of just get into that mode, where you're thinking about uh, what it is you're doing instead of coordinating as a group, and that's when everybody starts dying. Yep. All right, so what do people need to know about the release? Uh, State of Decay comes out uh, May 22nd, Standard Edition. Uh, May 18th, if you get the Ultimate Edition on Windows 10 PCs and Xbox One family devices. And it's going to be Day One Game Pass with the Standard Edition. Day One Game Pass, Standard Edition. So May 22nd, if you've got Game Pass, you'll jump in with the Standard Edition um, and be able to, to get into multiplayer and have a great time uh, discovering the story of your personal community. Cool. But you do the Ultimate Edition, you're going to have a four-day head start. Four-day head start, you get a, a copy of the Year One Survival Edition, the old game, um, and uh, we've announced uh, some DLC packs that are going to be coming out uh, a little bit later. Uh, the Independence Pack, which is a American Independence Day-themed pack with some cool <laughs> fireworks and some cool vehicles. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Daybreak, which is a whole new game mode that's going to be coming out uh, a little bit later. Awesome. Uh, and some other fun goodies. Final thoughts, Bernie? Well, listen, if you, you should definitely check it out when it comes out in May, but in between now and then, check out the first one. You know, it's a great game. It's one of my favorite games on the Xbox. Glad to see you guys made a second one. Really glad. Yeah, yeah. We really wanted to uh, we wanted to give people the State of Decay experience that they had been asking for when the first one came out, and the big thing they wanted was that co-op multiplayer. So if you loved State of Decay, you're going to love this even more. Ashley? Oh, are you going to play the zombie game with me? I will play the zombie yes, game with you. Yes, because But if this, if this ends up like a flock completion, we're in big trouble. No, there'll be zero shouting. I guarantee it. We'll, uh, be, we'll be good. I promise. I'm sure. All right. Well, thank you so much for bringing the game down to show yeah. us. I uh, can't wait to actually like get some more hands-on time and, and play it when it comes out. Uh, in the comments, let us know if this is a game that you're planning on checking out and what you want to know about it. Um, we'll be checking the comments and maybe ask a question or two uh, and update the description when we can. Um, but yeah, let us know what you're, if you are interested, if you're going to be playing the game, if you're going to be picking it up. And uh, yeah, like this video, subscribe to this channel if you're if just finding us via State of Decay, and uh, we'll have a bunch more. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.